So if you got hundreds of millions of people, tens of millions of people with that level of hate or belief, mm-hmm. like, for example, if you read the charter, if you read Hamas's charter, 1988, yeah. versus the 2017 charter, their original charter, you know what it says? If you can pull it up, Rob, I don't know if you have it or not. If you don't have it, I'll just read it to you. This is when it came, the, their first one passed? This is yeah. their charter. This okay. is what, like, their, 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 their Bill of Rights, yeah. oh, okay? okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Let me read you their Bill of Rights. Here's Hamas's Bill of Rights to OG1, the 1988, which is what, 35 years ago. What they were founded on, their founding principles. Original founding yeah. gotcha. principles. The complete destruction, it's four themes. Number one, the complete destruction of Israel as an essential condition for the liberation of Palestine and the establishment of a theocratic state based on Islamic law, Sharia law, number one. Number two, the need for both unrestrained and unceasing holy war, jihad, to attain the above objective, point number one. Number three, the deliberate disdain for and dismissal of any negotiated resolution or political settlement of Jewish and Muslim claims to the Holy Land. Number four, the reinforcement of historical anti-Semitic tropes and calumnies married to sinister conspiracy theories, okay? I mean, these are true believers that believe that. Now, keep this in mind. So that's what they believe in. When you raise your your kids, if you're a Bears fan, your kids are probably a Bears fan. You're a Lakers fan, they're a Lakers fan. You're this, most of the time, religion, beliefs is going to be the same, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what's interesting about this. This is why I had the conversation is they're having more kids per woman than any other religion in the world, okay? So whatever this number is, it ain't going away. It's (laughs) going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. By 2050, you you think right now, look, oh, my God, look who's the senator, Congress, Muslim, this. Dude, 2050, it's going to be like 20, 30, 40, 50, hundreds Involved right now in the last midterms election, 82 or 83 Muslim elected officials, city council, not not necessarily Congress and Senate, yeah. but just different positions that they got. From a competitor myself, I respect how competitive they are to win the war of them being able to get everybody to be baptized in their way of living, mm-hmm. okay, in their their way that they view the world should be, right? The laws that they follow. These are not people that are playing around. So when you're saying numbers like that, this is not going to slow down anytime soon. So what do you do? Okay, you kill 20,000 Palestinians and Hamas. All right, say you kill 50,000. Say you kill 100,000. And then what do you do? Okay, they got 2.1 million people living in Gaza, by the way. Yeah, and, and zero, zero Israelis, 2.1 million Palestinians. And to your point, about a million of those are young kids. Young yeah. kids, yeah. 50% unemployment. You know, I think it's, I don't know if it's NATO or who gives them money. You or somebody gives them money, 720, 730 million dollars. Mm. And they say the money doesn't end up going to the people. They keep it at the top and they go buy weapons. So this is kind of like, hey, you should kind of get rid of the blockade because you're not allowing business to come through here. And Israel says, no, we're not removing the blockade. Matter of fact, we're going to shut it down right now for water and food. But somehow, some way, they're getting food and, you know, shelter. They're getting food and water to these guys. Here's the point. (laughs) Number one, is this ever going to stop? Okay. You know, preventative. So let's just say preventative, right? You buy life insurance not because you're going to die tomorrow. You buy it because what? Guaranteed you're eventually going to die. <laughs> yeah, you have you need life insurance, day. right? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, you, you get on auto insurance not because you're going to get into an accident tomorrow because the possibility if it there. happens, right. you're yeah. protected, right? Yeah. What is insurance right now, okay? My concern right now is it's, it's easy to want to retaliate. Trust me, there's different parties involved. Palestinians... They're going to give their argument, which is what? How come you're not sharing our side of the story? Did you not see the father that's walking around with the daughter and the kid? Dude, we see all of that, and it's heartbreaking, okay? Then you hear the story of Israeli who are Israeli Americans who are here versus Israelis who are in Israel, left and right. To one side, let's destroy them all. Let's get rid of them. Let's make this all our land. Let's make it. You can only be a Israeli to come back to the Holy Land, and this is it, right? The other side is like, well, no, let's kind of figure out a way to negotiate with them. Then there's everybody else in the world that's not directly involved with it. You're not Palestinian. You're not a Jew. Maybe you're a Christian living in America. Maybe you're a 
you know, Mormon living in, you know, whatever, Brazil. I don't know what you are. You're sitting there saying, look, this Brazilian is, Mormon. Yeah, Brazilian, you know. believe it or not, I met, I met a I met a I met a Cuban Baha'i, which is kind of wow. weird. Baha'i well, Cuban. Baha'i Cuban. Yeah, apparently there's like a Baha'i uh, church in, in Cuba out of all places. Hilarious. But the point, the, the question I'm asking is, okay, so first starts there, and then all of a sudden residual effects. Da, 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 boom, front door, your house, your city, yeah. your community. Now what? How do you prevent from that happening, right? That's the concern. Mm -hmm. So I don't think any of this is going to be slowing down. But do I think they're going to retaliate and they're going to do something? Yeah, I think so. How bad is it going to be? I don't know. 20,000, 50,000, 100,000? I don't know. Whatever that number is, you're going to get retaliation from the other side. Yeah. You'll, you'll definitely get retaliation. I think where it, it, it could go, one scenario is... What's happened in the past? Look, they retaliate, and then numbers start to rise, meaning casualties. And you know, uh, Israel will stop. They, they, you know, they typically will say, "Look, don't, don't preach to, to us about morals, right?" Because you know, look what happened over the weekend, as a, as, as a point. Uh, but I think usually what would happen is the U.S. allies would have a off the radar very serious conversation at a certain point when it starts to look like, look, this is, you, you know, we got to stop because you're risking fissures in the support that exists for Israel. Mm -hmm. And at that point, typically, you know, that's when the Israeli government will back off and say, okay, we've, we've, we've done what we need to do. And they'll draw a line and say, we've accomplished our goal. And, and frankly, you're, again, you're not, I don't, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but you're not going to destroy Hamas, but they will get to a certain point that pressure will build, and they'll issue a statement that basically says we have degraded, we have, we have crushed them, we have done whatever. However, they're going to have to frame it, mm -hmm. right? And then Hamas will do what they do, and they'll release you know, their PR statements and say, yeah, look, you, know, you, you, could, you couldn't do it. You know, look how many civilians you killed, and by the way, we're still here. And it'll just keep going like it's been going since... Yeah, turn of the century. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You go back to whatever World War One. Mike, 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 the the you know Pat used the word that I think is uh, very important: the residual effect. Okay, so the last big dust up here was in '05, the disengagement, everything there. There's been mm -hmm. conflicts yeah, in between, yeah, 14, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's about to get ugly right now. The residual effect. So let's say it takes. A, you talked about unemployment the, the a million of the 2 million are uh, young people uh, younger yeah. people yeah so let's say there's a bunch of 10 year olds right now um kids they're running the streets you'd have seen the video of like uh the literal kids beating up an israeli kid because he was israeli they, he was captured all right so you see this so you talk about the residual effects so you know what are the sports that they these boys watch what are the big teams in gaza mm. there's no teams there's right. no sports there's no idols to look up to. I'm not looking up to Michael Jordan, let's say, or Ronaldo or Messi or Gretzky, whoever it is, who they look up to are these freedom fighters. We call them terrorists, but they call them freedom well, fighters. Well, sure, they're martyrs in, in their own community. They're martyr, of course. Yeah, and, and there's generational hate. It just gets, it's get, it's get passed along because, yeah, I mean, the trauma. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine kids, again, you know, and, and we have to be more uh, I don't want to say sophisticated because I'm not sophisticated, but mm -hmm. you, you have to be more complicated in your thinking and we tend we, we're not right we tend not to particularly here in the states where you got three minutes to cover a new story and everything's superficial and they but you can you can have real empathy for a, a, a five or six or seven or eight year old or a teenager living in gaza right and the, and the, the the terrible conditions and there doesn't seem to be where, where is the future where is it going to mm -hmm. lead how do i make my life better you can have those thoughts while still being absolutely disgusted right and it's some core of your being saying no we got to have some revenge here for for the horrible things that hamas does right and again putting their own people at risk because that's how they survive that's how hamas keeps going but uh, you know typically we don't do that typically we don't have really layered conversations but you can have, you know you can have two competing thoughts in your head at the same time